What's going on guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS bringing you the CWL Premier Week 7 League Recap and what an exciting week that it was. I mean, some insane things happened. Underdogs taking down top level clans. We have, we no longer have an undefeated clan as Forbidden suffered a loss, uh, here in week seven. So we have some footage and some stats to show you guys in that war. After we cover the standings, we'll go ahead and show you guys the highlighted wars. Again, where some incredible attacks were captured. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But, as always, we'll go ahead and break down the standings to show you guys where all the clans are sitting uh, right after week seven. All right, we'll go ahead and start off with the Wall Breaker Division, where we have War Addicts sitting in first place at five and two. They're still in first place, even though FYSB did take them down in week seven. FYSB is now at four and three, gaining a little bit of ground. Uh, Emphatic Fury also took a victory here in week seven. They're also at four and three. And we have Unius Exorcitus at fourth place. Uh, sitting at two and five after their loss. Uh, we have uh, in the balloon division, Bad Intentions, who are also at five and two, sitting alone in first place. Dark Looter X suffering a loss against COC Hogwars, where we also have some action uh, from that war. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But Dark Looter X taking a surprising defeat. Uh, they're at four and three. COC Hogwarts picking up their second victory of the season. They're now at two and five. And we have Axew something still winless on the season in fourth place. And they are sitting at 0 and 7. In the Wizard Division, we have Above and Beyond and Power COC both tied for first place. Above and, Above and Beyond did pick up a victory over CWC Brawlers who are in third place at three and four. And we have Meet the Kings, who are at 0 and 7. Uh, they're down in fourth place. Again, for those of you that don't know, they did drop out uh, a few weeks ago. So the remainder of their season, they will be taking losses. Uh, one thing to note, Power COC came into week 7 at 3 and 3. But since Meet the Kings dropped out, Power COC picked up a victory again they are at four and three sitting in second place in the healer division we have king jeffrey just continuing to smash clans they took down gahazi bomber two in week seven they're at five and two from Mont lava also at five and two uh king jeffrey is technically above them because King Jeffrey a couple weeks ago defeated from Molten Lava but both these clans are sitting at five and two Kahazi Bomber again is at three and four in third place after taking a loss. And we have Art of War also who took a loss against From Molten Lava in week seven. They are in fourth place sitting at two and five. All right, guys, next up we have, uh, we'll go ahead and start off at the top with this next bracket of clans. We'll start off with the Dragon Division, where we have Gunma Samurai continuing on their hot streak. They are at a solid 6-1 and one on the season, all alone in first place. Right on their heels, though, we have Grumpy Old Man, who has also been red hot right now. Uh, they picked up a victory. Uh, this weekend, they are currently at 5-2. and two. Uh, We have Reddit Viper after taking a loss, sitting in third place now at 3-4 and four on the season. And we have Valar Mugulis still winless on the season, sitting currently at 0-7 to round off the Dragon Division. Moving on down to the P.E.K.K.A. Division, we have our High Seleke in first place at 5-2. and two. Even though they suffered a loss, uh, they're still all alone in first place right now. North Awakens picking up a solid victory uh, this weekend. Completely smashing Varhai Seleke. Uh, but they are in second place at 4-3 and three right now. We have Dragon Rejects who took what many would say a surprising defeat against Kornfeld. But a defeat nonetheless. They are in third place. Uh, 
so far in the season, sitting at three and four. And Kornfeld with their victory, uh, picking up their second victory so far of the season, they are now at two and five to round off the Pekka division. Down in the Baby Dragon division, we have Swarm Synergy continuing to smash glands. Uh, this week was no different, picking up yet another victory looking very, very solid. They're at six and one, all alone in first place. Uh, right behind them, we have Gorteborg's Krieger, uh, who also picked up a victory here in week seven. They're sitting at four and three. And we have, uh, to round off the Baby Dragon Division, we have Assassin's Core and BD Unbeatables, both currently sitting at one and six so far on the season. And the last division we're going to cover, the most competitive uh, division so far in Premier, that being the minor division where we have Forbidden, even though they took a loss, they're still all alone in first place, now at 6-1 and one after Nottingham, who's in second place, took them down. Uh, Nottingham and One Hive Genesis both picked up victories, uh, the two clans that were victorious in the minor division, uh, both sitting in second place at five and two right now. And we have Dark Avengers, although they're in fourth place, their, their winning percentage is still above 500. Uh, again, even after taking a loss, they are at four and three so far uh, in this season. All right, guys, those are the standings in CWL Premier Season 3. Now let's go ahead and ch check out some incredible attacks from the highlighted wars here in Week 7. All right, guys, the first war that we're going to be covering out of uh, the highlighted wars was one of the biggest, one of the biggest surprises that, that came from Week 7. COC Hogwarts taking down none other then Dark Looters X, the final to this war, guys, 84 to 83. And what an insane matchup this was. Huge shout out to everybody at COC Hogwarts. Uh, again, their second victory of the season, taking down none other than DLX. Huge, huge victory. Going to go ahead and break down the stats for you guys. COC Hogwarts did get one 10v10 triple this war. That's what you guys are watching on the screen right now. Uh, the two stats, the two stats that COC Hogwarts really shined was their hit-ups. Uh, they were able to clear all of DLX's 11s with their Town Hall 10s. Uh, so huge props to them going 4 for 12. And they only had one dip fail. Uh, so definitely a solid performance uh, by COC Hogwarts heavy hitters. Dark Looter X really took a tough loss. And this is why uh, right here. DLX picked up four 10v10s, you guys, four 10v10s. Again, you're probably asking yourself, how did they lose this war getting four 10v10s? It was their 10v11s. Got to figure out what is going on there. Uh, kind of a category they've been struggling with throughout the season. Uh, only clearing two of COC Hogwarts Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. And they had two dip fails, so they went four for six on their dips. Uh, those other Town Hall 11 hits went to at least secure the two stars on their 11s. Um, and not to mention, and CLC Hogwarts kind of struggled with their 9s. They ended up having to dip three of DLX's Town Hall 9s with their Town Hall 10s, but still ended up edging out a victory. So huge, huge shout out to everybody at CLC Hogwarts taking down DLX. DLX has to figure out what is going on with their 10v11 guys and their dip game. Best of luck to both clans going into uh, week eight. All right, guys, next matchup, we have Nottingham, who took down none other than Forbidden. What is going on here in week seven? Uh, a lot of these matchups ending in a way no one thought was going to happen. Uh, not that Nottingham is a bad clan. They have been very, very good throughout the season, but Forbidden was undefeated. They were 6-0 and coming into Week 7. They're now 6-1 and on the season. <clears throat> Nottingham uh, took them down. The final to this war was 83-82, to so Nottingham picking up a solid one-star victory. Uh, go, I'll go ahead and break down the stats for you guys real quick. Uh, Nottingham did have one 10v10 triple this war, uh, but where Nottingham kind of struggled was on their hit-ups, only going two for 11, but where they shined was in their dip game. They did go six for six. 
Those other two Town Hall 11 hits went to at least ensure getting two stars on uh, the two bases that their 10s were not able to double. Uh, Forbidden. Forbidden definitely had their chance to win this war, guys. Remember, Nottingham only won by one star. Forbidden had two 10v10 triples this war, so they did a little bit better in that category. They also did better in the 10v11 department, going 3 for 12. They weren't able to clear, but they still went 3 for 12, which was uh, a little bit better than Nottingham. But where Forbidden lost this war, you guys, was their dip game, uh, a category that they've been very, very successful at throughout the season. Uh, they just, they definitely just had a bad war. Nottingham found a way to capitalize on it, but Forbidden went five for eight on their uh, 11 v10 dips, having three dip fails. Uh, so if a couple of those dips went the other way, Forbidden would have gotten the victory. Uh, but huge props, huge shout to Nottingham uh, for taking this victory. Uh, but again, Forbidden did have their chance. Uh, we'll see how they bounce back in week eight. All right, guys, next matchup we have is Swarm Synergy, who took on Assassin's Core. And Swarm Synergy definitely uh, outperformed Assassin's Core uh, as they have been dominating pretty much throughout the season. Uh, they're not, they're now, their record now is 6-1. and one. The final to this war was 85-82, to 82, so Swarm Synergy... Uh, picking up a three-star victory. Uh, but as we break down the stats, uh, Assassin's Core still had a decent war against Swarm Synergy bases, but again, Swarm Synergy has just been so dominating, uh, again, throughout the season. Swarm Synergy picking up three 10v10s uh, in this war. Uh, where they really really perform well you guys was on their hit ups definitely hitting above the league average they went four for ten on their hit ups uh so huge props to the town hall 11 guys over there and as far as their dips they went uh seven for eight so only having one dip fail uh not a big deal and as far as the town as far as the town hall nines uh both town hall nines did very very well uh, providing all kinds of scouts. Uh, Swarm Synergies 9s hitting at 67% three-star rate. Uh, we had Assassin's Cores Town Hall 9s hitting at 58%. So just a little bit above 50%, uh, but we're still able to get some scouts in. Assassin's Core was still able to pick up a 10v10, uh, so big props there. Uh, they went 3 for 18. Uh, 3 for 18 on 10v11. Uh, so they ate up a lot of their Town Hall 10 attacks, trying to get Swarm Synergy's 11s doubled with their Town Hall 10s. So definitely an area they can improve on. We know that they've uh, been managing at least one 10v10 uh, these last few wars. So they get these 10v11s nailed down, they'll have more 10v10 opportunities. And as far as their dips, they did go 6 for 7, uh, so just having one dip fail. And, you know, all in all, it was, uh, oh, and the breakdown, I do want to mention the breakdown, it was a 4-11-15 uh, breakdown, so a little bit heavier than the default breakdown here in Premier, but huge shout out to Swarm Synergy, uh, just dominating clans right now in the league. All right, guys, next up, we have Bad Intentions, who put on an absolute show uh, here in week seven when they took on ask you something the final to this war 84 to 77 picking up a huge seven star victory over ask you something uh so bad intentions definitely uh having quite a bit of momentum going into week eight here uh with this victory okay the stats they did have one 10 v 10 triple this war uh that's what you guys are looking at right now uh so props to them uh, where they did fairly, I mean, at this point in time, if, if, if you're clearing the 11s with your 10s, you're, you're, you're pretty much successful on your hitups. Uh, they were, they, they were able to clear all of Axie something's town hall 11s with their town hall 10s. Uh, they went four for 13, uh, where they really, really dominated. So they had one 10 v 10, they were able to clear the 11s, but where they really, really outshined Axie something was on their dip game guys they went a hundred percent uh meaning they went eight for eight on their dip so huge shout out 
uh, to everybody over in Bad Intentions taking this huge victory. This breakdown was also for 11-15. Uh, actually, something was not able to pull off uh, a 10 v 10 triple this war. Uh, the two categories where they've pretty much suffered throughout the season uh, was their, their hit-ups and their dip game. They were only able to clear two of Bad Intentions, Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. And they hit 50% on their dips going four for eight. Uh, definitely not going to win any wars uh, only managing 50% on your dips. So definitely have to figure out what is going on there. And and especially their Town Hall 10s uh, only having one 10v10 on the season. So definitely have to figure out what's going on uh, with their heavy hitters. But having said that, uh, definitely best of luck to both of these clans uh, moving into week eight. And props to Bad Intentions for pulling off a seven-star victory. All right, guys. Next up, we have Cornfeld who took down <coughs> Cornfeld who took down Dragon Rejects. The final to this war, eighty-two to eighty. Uh, so they did uh, pick up a two-star victory. The breakdown in this war again was a little heavier than the traditional default breakdown. Uh, it was four twelve fourteen. All right, uh, Kornfeld de definitely put up some decent numbers against Dragon Rejects uh, bases. Uh, 10v10s, they went uh, two for seven, so they did have two 10v10 triples, so good job there. Uh, 10v11s, they went three for 16, uh, so they, they just left one of the 11s, um, just one starred. And on their dips, they went seven for eight, only having one dip fail, so not a big deal there. And let's see, where Kornfeld really, really did well, also providing all kinds of scouts, their Town Hall 9s hit at 70%, only having 6 fails in total. Uh, so Kornfeld's Town Hall 9s definitely put on a show uh, here in Week 7. And Dragon Rejects still had a decent war themselves in a couple uh, of these categories. They also put up two 10v10 triples, so shout out uh, to their 10v10 guys over there. Uh, consistently managing a couple 10v10s, at least a couple 10v10s uh, each war. And identical to Kornfeld, they went 3 for 16 uh, on their hit-ups as well. And uh, where Dragon Rejects really ended up losing this war was on their 11 v10 dip game. Uh, they went four for seven. Uh, so they did have three dip fails uh, from the Town Hall 11s. That other Town Hall 11 attack went to ensure a two star on the base that their Town Hall 10s were not able to double. Uh, that Town Hall 11 they weren't able to double. And their Town Hall 9s did fairly decent, just hitting above 50%. But huge shout out to Kornfeld uh, for pulling off this victory. All right, guys. Next matchup we're going to be covering is the One Hive Genesis and Dark Avengers War. And One Hive Genesis putting on a dominating performance over DA. The finals of this war was 86-79. to that is a seven-star victory for OHG, and they were able to manage three 10v10 triples this war, as they have been pretty consistent throughout the season, putting up uh, three 10v10s, and they did it again this war as well. Uh, they also outshined DA on the hit-ups going four for 10, and they only had one dip fail going seven for eight. So just the one dip fail for OHG. Dark Avengers, unfortunately, were not able to execute a 10v10 triple, despite having quite a few tacks from their Town Hall 9s. Both, uh, both of these clans were very successful in their Town Hall 9s, providing each clan with quite a few scouts as well. Uh, DA's hit-ups, they did go three for nine, so they did leave one of OHG's Town Hall 11s only one star on the map and where they really fell flat uh was also their 10 v 11 or excuse me their 11 v 10 game uh having three dip fails it has been a pattern that we've been seeing uh throughout week seven quite a few clans struggling on these dips uh da also uh suffered from this as well uh, like i said going five for eight 
Best of luck to both clans going into week eight. Big shout out to OHG for putting up a seven star victory over DA. All right, guys, next war we're going to be covering is FYSB and War Addicts. This was a very, very close war. Really could have gone either way. Uh, we'll go ahead and break down one of the key stats on the War Addict side here in a little bit. We'll go ahead and cover the Victor stats first. FYSB putting up a solid 10v10 triple. Uh, that's what's playing on the screen right now. So they did have one 10v10. They did go 3 for 12 on their hit-ups. So they did leave one of War Addict's Town Hall 11's only one starred. But where FYSB really performed this war and where we've been seeing them struggle, so it's nice seeing them kind of bounce back, is their dip game. We've seen them go from going, you know, having five dip fills in one war all the way to going perfect like they did in this, in this war. Uh, so huge shout to FYSB on uh, their improvement. This is the FYSB, uh, like I said, that people have been waiting for. And it kind of looks like they have returned. Again, going perfect on their dips. On the War Addict side, they definitely had a painful loss, guys. Uh, the final to this war, I don't think I mentioned it, 84 to 83 was the final. But War Addicts, as you guys are about to hear, had a painful loss. And this is why. They put up three 10v10 triples this war, uh, where they had, where they did very well in the start of the season, kind of fell flat on the 10v10s in the middle. But now we've seen them put up a uh, solid three 10v10s. And they also, so they outperformed FYSB on, in the 10v10s. They also outperformed FYSB on the hitups because they were able, they were able to clear all of FYSB's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall, with their Town Hall 10s going four for nine. But this is where War Addicts really, uh, took the loss here. They went four for eight on their dips, on their 11v10 dip game. So only hitting at 50%. And again, FYSB only had a one star victory. So again, War Addicts had a really painful loss. FYSB capitalizing it, still putting up a very solid performance, doing the complete opposite, going 100% on their dips. Huge shout out uh, to FYSB. Best of luck to both clans as they head into week eight. All right, guys, next matchup. Uh, we have the red hot grumpy old men who took on Reddit Viper in what was a very, very close war uh, to many people's surprise. A lot of people thought grumpy old men were just going to come in here and wipe the floor with Reddit Viper, but that was not the case. Both clans putting up a dominating performance. Uh, here's the stats from this war. Grumpy old men putting up a solid 310 V10s. Reddit Viper also putting up a solid 310 V10s. Uh, so they have definitely had a big improvement from prior weeks uh, so far in the season. Grumpy Old Men clearing Reddit Viper's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. Reddit Viper also clearing uh, Grumpy Old Men's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s and doing it in one less attack. Uh, so the first two stats have pretty much been neck and neck, pretty identical. This was the difference of the war, guys. Remember, the final, 85 to 83, Grumpy Old Men getting a two-star victory, and this is why. Grumpy Old Men went eight for eight uh, on their dips, hitting at 100%, where we have Reddit Viper went six for eight. So those two dip fills were the two missing stars that ultimately led into Grumpy Old Men pulling off this victory. And as far as the Town Hall 9s, both of their Town Hall 9s completely smashed this war, providing a ton of scouts. So Reddit Viper, again, like I already mentioned, we have seen them struggle in quite a few wars uh, so far in Premier, but we have seen them pick up their game. And we've seen it in this grumpy old men war, uh, putting up very, very solid, solid stats and pretty much identical throughout. But unfortunately, those two dip fails ended up costing them this war. Uh, but regardless, uh, these numbers from this war and putting up these stats are going to win you a lot of wars in Premier. And just to give you guys the breakdown of this war 
it was a 412 14 breakdown so they did spin a little heavier than the traditional default premier breakdown and both kinds putting up a lot of stars especially with this heavy breakdown 85 to 83 was the final huge shout out to both clans and definitely a tip of the cap to grumpy old men they have been red hot lately and have continued to do so through week seven all right, guys, this is the last matchup that we're going to be covering uh, from the highlighted wars here in week seven. From Molten Lava went ahead and took on Art of War. And the final to this war was 82 to 80. Uh, the breakdown was 4, 11, 15. So again, uh, quite a few clans here in week seven were spinning a little heavier uh, than the traditional breakdown of 4, 10, 16 here in Premier. Uh, from Moon Lava was able to pull off a uh, 10 v 10 triple this war and where they did pretty much struggle was on their hit ups going three for 14. Uh, so they did leave one of Art of War's Town Hall 11's only one starred and they did chew up quite a few attacks in order to clear three of these bases. Uh, they did go seven for eight, so a solid performance, only having uh, one dip fail. And they hit just above 50% uh, for their Town Hall 9s, 58% to be exact. And as far as Art of War, they also had one 10v10 triple. Uh, it just took a few more attacks in order to do so, but we're still able to edge one out. Uh, where they outshined from Molten Lava was on their hit-ups. They were able to clear, and they did it. Uh, they did, they did hit it 50% going four for eight. So well above the league average. So huge shout out to Art of Wars 10 v 11 guys. But where they fell flat was on their dips where they hit 50%. But that's the category you do not want to hit 50% in going four for eight, having those four dip fails. Uh, Town Hall 9's hitting at 52%. Uh, but from Mont Lava edging out, uh, the victory over Art of War. All right, guys. Well, week seven is now in the books. I cannot believe how fast the time has gone by that we're already going to be coming up on week eight here in CWO Premier. And that's what you guys are looking at on your screen right now. These are all the matchups that are going down in week eight. Remember, there's only a few wars left here in the regular season before we get into the playoffs. So make sure you guys stay tuned to the channel for more CWL content coming your guys' way. And of course, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.